The moment Nepal's earthquake hit my home more than 4,000 people died in the huge earthquake that hit Nepal at the weekend. And nearly 8,000 have been injured. Millions more have had their lives turned upside down, including journalist Virai Kuti Rai who was at her home in Kathmandu when it happened. At exactly 11.58 on Saturday morning, my brother abruptly stopped his clumsy dance to O.T. Janaisa's song Coco and scream Buchalo or Earthquake. As he moved towards the door, the mirror in my room shook violently. Stay there, he said calmly as I clutched the black tote bag to my chest, feeling my breath getting shorter and shorter. I think I screamed and then yelled while he reminded me not to move from the doorway. We've always been taught it's one of the safest places in a building during an earthquake. This was the big one we had all dreaded for years. My voice was drowned out by the rattling of my laptop on the desk, the mirror screeching against the wall, the yelling of my neighbors downstairs and the doors and windows violently slamming back and forth. And then, after what seemed like an eternity, it stopped, or maybe it didn't. We looked at each other and put on our shoes rather calmly. In the next few seconds, before we left our flat, I managed to shove my laptop. Purse and passport, yes my passport, in my already overflowing tote. I looked back at my room, I had just cleaned it that morning, grabbed my old camera bag, slung it over my shoulder and hurried down the stairs. But before I could turn towards the main door, I saw the section of the wall that surrounds our building collapse. We rushed down the stairs and jumped over the rubble to find all our neighbors gathered in the narrow alley outside. We made our way to the yard of a nearby block where people were huddled together, some holding young babies, some in shock. Women were screaming from the fourth floor and men were trying to take their bee.